Rwanda's largest in-person tech event recently returned for its second edition, following a successful inaugural edition back in 2021. This year, Rwanda's Ministry of ICT and Innovation, along with its partners, joined forces to create a center stage platform to spotlight outstanding creative tech enterprises in Rwanda's startup ecosystem. My name is Murundi Sara, and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. In this episode, under the clouds of the second edition of Hunger Pitch Fest, we explore the essence of creativity and innovation across private and public institutions in Rwanda, spotlighting the environmental factors collaborative efforts and challenges that the ecosystem players have had to overcome in order to blossom. Stay tuned. This year's Hunger Pitch Fest has paved the way to fast track, impact, and reach for winning startups. What does Hunger mean for the ecosystem players in Rwanda's startup scene? Hunger means create in, in the King of Rwanda. So it's really looking at the creativity and the talent of young Rwandans and the startups that are in the ecosystem and create a platform that supports them to, to move forward. Hunger Pitch Fest is a new initiative that we inaugurated last year to create a unique platform that celebrates tech entrepreneurship and innovation. And this year, in the second edition, we are celebrating entrepreneurs and businesses that are really creating solutions that we need. But most importantly, we've brought along partners, both development partners that have supported the event, but most importantly, corporates and public institutions that are opening doors for these startups to uh, be able to innovate, solve the right problems. So we are launching different initiatives within the Hunger Pitch First. And as you know, Hunger means create in, in the King of Rwanda. So it's really looking at the creativity and the talent of young Rwandans and the startups that are in the ecosystem and create a platform that supports them to, to move forward. So today we talked about uh, the launch of um, uh, the Hunger Health Track. This is actually looking at um, leveraging um, digital solutions and technology uh, advancement to solve particular problem in health. Hunger Pitch Fest has and continues to create a countrywide spotlight on the winning startups, which opens up more doors towards success for the emerging winners. Do these opportunities present lasting results for winners? Winning Hunger to start up gives us a platform to do more than we're doing now. We've been trying, but uh, there is a limit. There is a limit to what we're doing. So most of those limits are taken down by winning hunger. We get to get to more people, which is what we want. Create awareness around these uncommunicable diseases. Get people to understand what we do. And now that we've won hunger, we'll be able to afford to do that. Before Hunga, I would say that um, our solution was really a solution that was catered, let's say, mainly in Kigali. And I feel like uh, the, you know, the, the first Hunga uh, kind of like was, was really a very popular event, I would say, in the country. And a lot of people were watching it from all over the country. And I feel like that really helped us uh, as bag to be able to kind of like market our solution to, um, you know, to a wide range of people. Um, and that was really good because, um, you know, we got a lot of people, for example, after that we went to do a tour in, um, in one of the campuses, uh, the University of Rwanda campus in Huye, and a lot of people were like, hey, you know, you guys were a part of Hanga. And that was, really, that, that was really cool because it becomes a very, it breaks the barrier to entry uh, in terms of like getting users, getting customers, uh, kind of helps you because people already uh, have seen you somewhere. Um, so I would say definitely it made our solution, you know, much more popular um, in, in the market, which um, helped us to gain a lot more users and uh, really break that barrier to entry when it comes to customers as well. From here, it's really giving them the, the network, the support. Of course, there's a seed capital that, you know, helps them to advance their prototypes and to have also the technical support through our partners uh, to perfect their go-to-market models and strategies. And I think within that support, we expect that within the next six to 12 months, they will be able to grow. They will be able to understand the market better, maybe redesign their models and products to fit better the market. And so we committed uh, that uh, as a ministry, of ICT Innovation, the Rwanda Development Board, the UNDP and other partners, that we will continue to, to pursue them beyond the competition that they want today. Rwanda is ripe as a, 
proof of concept where you have the right environment and the support to design the right solution. And our challenges here in this market are similar to the rest of the continent. So what I hope to see is more companies taking advantage of this you know, initial support creating the right solutions and taking them in other markets. And so we've seen examples of that, and I really firmly believe that these pitches we saw today, the founders we saw today, and the companies that um, they, they represent are on track to do exactly that, to bring solutions in other markets. The Ministry of ICT and Innovation, along with its partners, made it a mission to generate competition in innovation across not just the startup scene, but also within corporate and public institutions. They did so by awarding outstanding institutions for their innovative solutions. These wins are highly attributed to collaborations between private and public sector institutions in order to create innovative solutions. We want to also make sure that the public services, public institutions can also follow suit to make sure that the service we offer as government institutions are really innovative, are solving the problem of the citizens, leveraging technology. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Public Innovation Award mm -hmm. goes to Rwanda National Police. We received the award with both hands. So we, we just uh, saw it in the media that actually the uh, traffic and law enforcement system uh, was listed among us the other solutions. And finally, when people voted, it turned out to be that the system has actually won an award. So Rwanda National Police leadership was informed, and they received the award with both hands. But also we have other uh, solutions that I think are related to service delivery uh, that are also in that regard of uh, innovation or, or Bohanga. For example, we have um, the registration system for doing a test for driving licenses. If you take, for example, the computer-based uh, uh, test that I should given to people who sit for provision driving license, I think there's also an innovation in that regard with regard to service delivery, where people sit where they are, they register through Lembo, and then they access uh, the exams and the RMP systems. For public institutions to better innovate their services, partnering with private sector institutions has presented exponential results. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of plans mm -hmm. we, we, and we shall always keep improving on what we do. For example, you have had um, a lot of complaints with regard to drive, issuing driving tests across the, the country. People previously have been complaining, but um, in the mid-November and early this year, we, 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 we announced that we, we are going to open the systems. Uh, the systems are going to open uh, uh, endlessly. Let me say that, or oh, they will be open ended registration for people. So we, we did a lot with the IREM to, to improve on the service. Upon the conclusion of the second edition of Hanga Pitch Fest, just like last year, Rwanda's startup scene is buzzing with inspiration, and the next set of winners for the third edition of Hanga Pitch Fest are setting their sights on the $50,000 grand prize. What caliber of startups and startup founders take home the prize? What should they prepare to encounter in the next Hanga Pitch Fest? I was definitely super excited about it. Um, I think it's one thing that uh, we were talking about when the first hunger, you know, ended. It was like, okay, it's going to be exciting to see what kind of companies are going to come and pitch uh, this year. And I think um, because of how successful the first one was, it really attracted a lot of high quality founders and high quality solutions. I would say any entrepreneur, any startup founder that you would ask, they would always say, oh, capital. Um, and I would say that um, definitely that money helped us to be able to hire more people, especially in our tech development team, uh, but also have, uh, you know, heavily invest into marketing and, uh, you know, customer acquisition. I'm a co-founder at Lifestyle Health, and what we do at Lifestyle is that we reward people for every step they take towards being healthy. We are addressing the rising burden of non-communicable diseases. These are diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and similar diseases. And what we are trying to do is incentivize people to pick up healthier behaviors in terms of what they eat, their mental health and physical health. Running a health tech startup anywhere is not easy, and in Rwanda, it's also not easy. 
And the reason why is that uh, health is one of the most conservative sectors we have. And the reason why is because it's highly regulated. So for every solution you bring in, it, it has to be uh, looked into and all the regulations are against you most of the times. So meeting those regulations and coming up with an innovation that actually helps people and finding the balance between the, between the two is not very easy. We've gotten a lot of help to be where we are at the moment. We're part of the Jasiru program which really helped us to shape uh, our vision. We had the idea and we know what we were passionate about, but I was, through Jasira I was able to meet uh, my co-founder, uh, Stephen Ogueno, who is as passionate uh, in addressing these non-communicable diseases. And having someone who gets your passion really helps. And the government overall has been very supportive in terms of uh, any kind of support we might need whether it's workplaces, this type of competitions like hunger that brings a spotlight to what we're doing and many more. Rwanda is ripening its creative and innovative talents. The grounds to spring up innovative solutions across all sectors have been prepared. The question that remains is, will you take this as a challenge to create an innovative solution and do business in Rwanda? That's it for today. Thank you for watching this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Let's keep the conversation going. To engage with us, you can tag us on our Twitter handle at CNBC Africa or tag me directly at the Murunji Sarah. This was Doing Business in Rwanda.